Hi, I'm Dr. Jean Duyard, and today I want to talk about how to protect your breast with iodine. You know, iodine deficiency is a deficiency that affects a big chunk of the world's population. About 37% of the world's population are deficient in iodine. In America, that range is about between 10 and 36% of the folks not getting enough iodine. And at the highest risk are women of childbearing age, which is really important. So if you're gonna get pregnant, you're pregnant, or you're nursing your baby, really important to know if you have the right amount of iodine, because iodine is used for the development of the brain and neurological function of your baby. Iodine is used during pregnancy or during lactation, it's been shown to increase breast milk, and during pregnancy and lactation, there's more iodine in your breast tissue than there is in your thyroid. So, and because of that, breast health is really dependent on the adequate or ample amount of iodine. Um, in Japan, for example, where they eat about 25% more iodine in their diet than we get here, they have the lowest rates of breast cancer in the world. They eat on average about 13 to 15 milligrams of iodine per day. We get about 150 micrograms of iodine per day. And at that high level of iodine they get in their diet with seaweed and, and, and cod and salmon and shrimp and, and all that, you know, kombu and kelp, it doesn't have any negative effect on their thyroid, which is really interesting. But the studies are there, many of them showing there's a direct link between iodine intake and, and breast cancer prevention. And the studies show that, that the iodine will protect the breast from uptaking not only toxic environmental pollutants, uh, but also uptaking toxic estrogens into the breast tissue. It's been shown to be a powerful antioxidant to protect the cells from lipid peroxide, damaging of the fat cells. When you think about your breast tissue, which is mostly fat, if you're getting oxidizing those tissues, that can compromise breast health in a significant way. Ayurveda says that iodine is a lymphatic mover, and it's, a, it's the antibacteria uh, agent of the 1800s, so it helps to sort of scrub and, and uh, and kind of scrub the lymphatic system from opportunistic bad bacteria that may also contribute to compromised breast health as well, right? So iodine is, is a really important piece of the puzzle when it comes to that. And, and, and in the last 50 years, uh, 30 years since the 1970s, I guess that is 50 years, we're about, we get about a 50% less iodine in our diet than we did back then. And that's due to a handful of things. One, you know, we stopped eating, you know, iodized salt and changed over to sea salt, which has minimal amounts of iodine. And even iodized salt that's been out in the open air for four weeks loses its iodine content significantly. So just be aware of that. Um, they used to condition the bread with, with iodine. In 1980, they switched over to bromide, which is a toxic halogen, which competes with the iodine receptor. So that's sort of interesting. They used to use iodine in the dairy industry, in the milk industry to clean all the equipment. They don't do that either anymore. So when you put all that together, we don't get the iodine that we need and we're beginning to see deficiency-like symptoms like more thyroid conditions and goiters, even similar, not quite as bad, as we saw in the, in the mid-1920s when they had goiter belts and they, that's when they first put iodine in the salt and that changed the thyroid function, you know, really forever. But now we have people not getting enough iodine. So it's something that, you're, that is really important, particularly if you're gonna get pregnant, particularly if you're having a baby, particularly if you're nursing your baby, and that just turns out to be the number one demographic for deficiency is women of childbearing age. So that's really important that women need to know that. But, you know, so you can get you know, more seaweed in your diet, more yogurt, more salt, all those things are really important, but you can also get your iodine tested. And that's really important, I think, as well. And there's a test that we use uh, where you take a 48 milligram pill of iodine, swallow it, and then you urinate in a bucket. It's a very beautifully discreet, bright, fluorescent orange bucket that you carry around with you for a day, urinate in it, measure how much you urinated, send, tend to sample that in and how much you urinated for that day, send it to the lab and they tell you how much you took in and how much you excreted out. And you should excrete out about 90%, but if you don't, and you uptake more than that, that suggests your body needed the iodine. And what was really interesting about that study is it's the, it's the gold standard for iodine testing to know exactly how much you need or how low you are. But Dr. David Brownstein, who's one of the leading thyroid experts in the world, did also a study on that test, uh, which is a home test kit. We send it to you, send it, and then you just send it to the lab, and the lab sends us the results, and we send you the results with a, with a, a recommendation of what to do iodine-wise. 
But David Brownstein did a study and he found that when people did that test, took a big 48 milligram amount of iodine, they excreted a significant amount of bromide chloride and fluoride out through the urine. 70% increase, 78% increase excretion of fluoride, 50% uh, increase of bromide and chloride, which are toxic halogens which compete with our iodine receptors. So if you're exposed to a lot of bromides in your bread or in, they're in any type of uh, fire retardant chemicals or, 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 or cloths or fabric uh, or chloride in your pools and your water, fluoride in your water, they actually found in one study, and, and this is all in the article, it shows you with this video, that when people had adequate amount of iodine in their diet and they're optimized, the fluoridated water had a minimal effect, which you know is important. I've written a lot of articles on why we put fluoride in our water and do we really need it? And it's just for tooth decay. And if you really want to fluoride in your mouth for tooth decay, you can use mouthwash and toothpaste, but it's in all the water and everybody gets it whether you like it or not. And there's potential issues there that I've written about. Um, so how do you get that, that fluoride out of your system? Turns out that iodine becomes a chelator for pulling some of that fluoride out of your tissues in a really big way, which I think is you know really, really critical. I'll tell you a quick story. I had a patient of mine who came to me years ago with thyroid issues and she came in with new thyroid blood work that was, you know, she had been doing really, really well. All of a sudden her numbers were off the charts again. And I was like, ah, I was really stumped. And I uh, called a friend of mine, Ryan Drum, who's a PhD researcher, he grows his own seaweed in, in British Columbia, I believe is where he lives, definitely in the Northwest. Brilliant, brilliant man. And I asked him and, and just happened to catch him on the phone and the patient was right here. and. I said, Ryan, I've got this patient and her thyroid numbers were doing great. Her weight was really great. Now all of a sudden her numbers are off the charts um, and her thyroid is out of whack and I don't know what to do. And he said, has she bought a new car or new furniture recently? It was really amazing because we had just were talking about how she was telling me that she just bought a new car, just bought new furniture, and she couldn't close the windows in the car or our, or our, or our house because the, the outgassing was so bad. And Ryan said, that uh, the thyroid is the number one organ for uptaking environmental pollutants and toxins and how, it's so how and it can alter the function of the thyroid. So you really have to be, you know, it is a chemical sensitive gland that is really important to understand. And, and, um, and iodine turns out to be, when you have enough iodine, it, it kicks out those halogens that uptake into the iodine receptors and it protects you from uptaking those chlorides, bromides, and bromides and fluorides into your tissues, which is really important. So anyway, um, what's really interesting is that, that the research shows you don't need 15 milligrams of iodine, which is way too much, and I don't recommend that. Um, I recommend using what the, what the research suggests to protect your breasts, which is about one to three milligrams of iodine per day. Um, and because the studies show that when you take a big chunk of iodine in one dose, that like in that test, it's 48 milligrams, if you took a lot of iodine in one sitting, like a big shrimp dinner, you're gonna get a lot of iodine that will kick out some of the other toxic halogens from uptaking into those iodine receptors, right? Which is a really good idea. So we have a product called Iodine HP, which is 12 milligrams of iodine, half iodine, half iodide, and, and then you take one of those pills every two weeks to protect your breast. It gives you about one milligram of iodine per day, which is really over the, over the course of the two weeks, and it give you the breast protection that you need. Um, I, I think that taking more than that is clearly overkill. I think that in, in addition to that, uh, or in, in lieu of that, or in, you know, it, it, I would take, make sure you're getting a significant amount of iodine in your diet. Vegetarians, on one study showed 25% of them were deficient in iodine, and vegans, 80% of them were deficient in iodine. So if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you really need to make, think, make sure you're getting a lot of seaweed in your diet, and, uh, and then also think about the possibility of an iodine supplement. And you don't need to do it every single day. If you do it once, a bigger dose every couple of weeks, you get, the, you get that kind of halogen flush that we were talking about, which is a pretty cool thing. All right, well, I think that's it for iodine. Please check out this article uh, associated with this video called Protect Your Breast with Iodine. Please check it out. It's really important to understand that, uh, particularly if you're at childbearing age and you're thinking about or pregnant or nursing your baby. Uh, and like I said, iodine will increase the production of your breast milk and also deliver iodine to your baby's neurological developing system, which is really important. All right, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Villard. Do you like this video? 
Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.